Why, hello, algebra students, and welcome back to another video lesson today as we talk about the discriminant and continue to investigate and look at what that tells us about the graph of quadratics. Now, one of the things I'm going to start to do a little bit more of is add these warm up questions in as we get ready for many tests, quizzes, things of that nature. And today's warm up talks about a ball being thrown up, excuse me, thrown upwards with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second from a height of 2 meters. When will the ball hit the ground? So we're going to try and figure out when will the ball hit the ground using a graph and using the quadratic formula. In order to answer this one, we need to know which equation that we are using. That would be y equals negative 4.9 t squared plus the initial velocity v naught v sub 0 t plus then the initial height. All right, so there's the equation we have to use, negative 4.9 because it's meters. And we're looking at negative 4.9 t squared plus the initial velocity v0 is 10 meters, so 10 t plus the original height. We're throwing it from two feet off the ground. When will it hit the ground means I want to know when will this equal zero. And so we can go to graphing and we can go to quadratic formula. So I think uh, the first approach that we're going to take is to, let's try and use Desmos first. How does that sound? All right, let's go to the Desmos graphing one. Desmos calculator. Instead of t, we've got to use x. So y equals negative 4.9x squared. The initial velocity was 10, so 10x plus an initial height of 2. And we get that path. Notice here's our y-intercept. The ball starting from 2 feet. It's going up and reaching a height there. And also it's coming back down. And it's hitting the ground right there. So that's what we are looking for in terms of how long until it hits the ground. So we've got that nice little graph to help us show. Now we can, again, we can plug this into the quadratic formula. This is our A, this is our B, and this is our C. The opposite of B is negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times the a value times the c all over twice a. All over that twice a. And so we, again, we can go ahead and grab the other Desmos calculator to help us with that one. Insert a fraction. The opposite of b is negative 10 plus the square root of b squared minus 4 times the a value times the c value all over twice, oops, wrong one, twice a, and we get negative 0.18, negative. 0 0.18 or could change our subtract our addition to a subtraction and 2.224. So 2.224, it's the same thing we got on that graph. 2.22 and 4, meaning which one of those is the answer? 2.224. It'll take the ball that long, 2.24 seconds or whatever we're throwing a ball to come back down to the ground. So you can see how quadratic formula is helping us to come up with solutions as well as that graph. Now, today and yesterday, we're really investigating that discriminant piece, that b squared minus 4ac, the part underneath the square root sign, because it's telling us about the solutions that we might have. So let's see what you remember. How many, this quadratic equation has how many solutions? So take a minute, figure out the discriminant, and then tell me how many solutions. All right, hopefully you remembered to do 5 squared minus 4 times A times C. 
25 minus 8 gives me 17. So it does not have 17 solutions though. But because the discriminant is positive, it tells me that it would have two solutions. Two solutions. X squared plus 5X plus 2. Y equals X squared plus 5X plus 2. And notice here and here are those X intercepts or the solutions, okay? And so that discriminant is telling me that if I were to graph and find the solutions, I would have two solutions because it's positive. All right, let's look at this second example. Find the value of the discriminant and then tell me how many solutions would this have? Well, in order for us to identify the A, B, and C, we have to remember first to get our equation equal to zero, meaning the C value here should be positive eight. So B squared or negative two squared minus four times A times C. Negative two squared is four and four minus 32 gives me negative 28. And if I ever get a negative for a discriminant, we have zero solutions, zero. X squared minus two X equals eight. Or X squared minus two X plus eight. And notice it never touches that X intercept. So it's got no solutions. What about the last one on this page that's covered up? X squared equals negative 25. Again, we've got to get them all on the same side. So X squared plus 25 equals zero. A is one. B is zero in this problem. We don't have a B value. And C is 25. So you got to be careful how you label them. B squared, which is 0 squared minus 4 times A, which is 1 times the 25, gives me 0 minus 100 or negative 100, meaning this one would also have no solutions. All right, well, how does that interpret then to the graph, right? So the discriminant of the equation that produces this type of graph is going to be what type of number? So if it's got this graph and we have no x-intercepts, no x-intercepts, which also means we have no solutions, tells me that the discriminant of this equation is negative. If I were to try and evaluate the discriminant, I'm going to get a negative value because it has zero solutions. What about this graph? Here's my X and here's my Y. The discriminant to this graph and this equation, the discriminant has a value that is positive got to be positive because we have two x-intercepts. We have an x-intercept here and an x-intercept there, meaning we have two solutions. So it's positive. All right. Now, what you're going to be working on today is this practice stuff out of your packet, and I'm going to link that in Classroom, and it's really asking you to find the value of the discriminant. What number is it? What's the value? And then how many x-intercepts? Remember, this is also how many solutions would it have? And then you are just drawing a really makeshift quick graph. Okay, so the value of the discriminant, the op or b squared, so one squared minus four times a times c is one. Negative four times one is negative four, but negative four times negative six is plus twenty-four. So the value of the discriminant is twenty. Five. 
That means how many solutions, how many intercepts? We would have two intercepts. Now, before I draw the graph, we got to go back to remembering what does the A value tell us? If it's positive, it opens up. And if it's negative, it would have to open down. So because it's a positive one, it's going to open up, and it's got to go through the x-axis twice. I could draw it over there. Maybe this, I'll show you a different one in red. I could have drawn it like that. There's a lot of different options on how you could draw this, okay? You might want to just go to Desmos and punch that in to see what type of graph you get. Now let's look at letter B. B squared or negative 6 squared minus 4 times A times C. Negative 6 squared is positive 36 minus 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. And 36 minus 36 gives us a discriminant of 0. We haven't hit this one yet today, but when we get a discriminant of 0, how many x-intercepts? It's got one and one exact solution, meaning I'd have to try and figure out where it is, but my graph is only going to touch the x-axis once, just once. So that's how you're going to be working on today's practice problems by filling in the table and seeing if you can identify some of these key characteristics. If you have any questions, please make sure that you do indeed reach out. Otherwise, until next time, everyone, stay safe.